KSP 2 Hands on Gameplay was released by some of the YouTuber invited to test the game by Private Division. This includes a full explanation from a game developer perspective, I want to talk about the assembly building, assembly building has changed a lot, because we had a closed building in KSP1 now it's an open building, whole interaction system is changed and, every item has new thumbnail, also some parts has their original 3D models, maybe a bit optimized, but they look the same, maybe to give off the same beat of KSP2, I personally feel they have made Bab a bit darker and the UI is too. Complex and a lot of buttons pop in the user's face at once, but 80% of this game's audience is is from KSP1, they have better ideate how to use all this, it would be harder to comprehend it by a new player. For new parts, they have added a lot of engines, the biggest engine mammoth engine from KSP1 is looking mid in KSP2, I can't wait to try out all the engines. One thing that I predicted come true is different type of fuels, now different type of fuels has different weight, different performance, different engines, and reaction on temperature. Coming outside assembly building, we can see a lot of details, another thing I predicted, about the terrain that it feels a lot like the game city skyline, maybe or it's just me, the space center has buildings like a lot of building, and four, I mean four launch pads, and four landing pads, two runways, this will build a story in carrier mode, for unlocking, and upgrading purposes. Coming back to the launch, we can see the amount of details is so high. Back in KSP1 we had a simple flat surface. As a launch pad, but here we can see, this launch pad has depth, a launch tower, a lot of water's tanks. In KSP1 we had only two or three wattle tanks. In this all their tanks and pipes we can see makes sense. And also they work they can throw waters and makes water sound effect. Now to a big thing I didn't like is this, countdown system, you can hear it yourself. When you touch this level of realism why you see a need to make it cringe, it's not even a 10 to 0 countdown, it's just some, jerkish, comment if you agree with me, launching rocket as a lot of actions at once, engine pylum is looking sick, but waters fall mod ones like better in my opinion, sound of engines are recorded for real engines as you all know already, I don't think the actual physics plum is. Going through under the pad, it's just the particle system under the launch pad, it would have been cooler looking if actual plum was calculated physics wise and interacted with every other object. UI of the launching section we can see the NAV ball has been shifter. Because in KSP 1 you can't see your craft landing properly because of the NAV ball in the metal, again, this feels a bit complex, but they have dome smart and some the NAV ball for a lot of features and informations to save space on other part of screen. After liftoff, I don't see any meaning or use of this water's canals inside the lawn of Space Center, if anyone knows, what is use of it can tell me in comments please, KSP2 has a different feel of handling a craft that doesn't exist in KSP1, because KSP2 process the data physics and aerodynamic on the precision of meters, the it is the closest we have something in realty, some of the players may like it or don't like it, I think devs should provide a settings which called the hyper. Physics, enabling this will make the game process everything and provide real as possible experience, or this can be added as a difficulty setting for the player choosing carrier mode, and also we can turn it off if we want to feeling of KSP1 and KSP2 for some reasons, the staging is better than KSP1, I don't really see the use of this go button, everyone know s pace is stage button but maybe they remove it, what was at its place, was Kerbal Cam, that is moved to top right corner. To land a, lander on a newly discovered planet, waking this from the planet's perspective is so much cooler, and be unsustainable on another planet and populate a planet away from homeland. This game is built on Unity version 5, from scratch, the planets are made form 0, because you can see the details in terrain, in KSP1 terrain was plain and no details, in this build clouds are missing high resolution textures, and has some clipping issues, also missing waters physics, but this is from 9th of February, they will be fixed on the early access launch build. Similar to Kerbin all other planets like, Duna, Eve, are rebuilt with a lot of details, we don't have any. 
footage for that at this moment, a lot of people may be thinking $50 is too much for this game, but, this is not the actual game, this will get many content update like, exploration update, interstellar travel update, colonies update, in which we can make colonies a, travel in light years and explore, other planets, solar system, my dream is. Game overall feels a lot cleaner, and complex at same time, they have adopted new fonts, that's a good thing, this is just KSP1 with better graphics and better UI, and extra parts, the graphics we can SE is the work of Unity Engine, lighting, shadows, global eliminations, all these element are done by engine almost, the amount of tasks are done at on point, and the amount of graphics are consumed it's the actual rezone of those high GPU demands, CPU handle the calculation for the Gameplay and GPU process the texture files and other visual expects like lighting shadows, crisp sharp shadow looks good but it's your GPU working, and after all the updates it will be bulky to operate the visuals, so to be ready the demands high-end cards. Overall game is phenomenal, the best space sim game ever built KSP, as I wrote in my Steam review, I will be buying the early access S and making videos for the tutorials and visual updates for that you can subscribe, like and, comment your opinions, that makes me a lot happy.